Right, so the first thing to watch out for is you will probably have a threshold. They try and make it as small and as low as possible. That's literally just because my bathroom is a wet room, so it's to make sure no wet waterness goes out <laughs> here. <laughs> video first off thanks to all our new subscribers I've seen that number slowly growing so thanks for subscribing hope you enjoying the videos tell your friends that I'm amazing and hopefully <laughs> they'll come too but yeah today we're gonna run through a video I'm gonna show you sort of my bathroom I know I did the how to, how to get changed video but I'm gonna show you more so the adaptions I have for my bathroom and how I got my bathroom and things to watch out for if you are looking to do the same so yeah, stick with me, hope you enjoy this video, smash a like, and enjoy. So, how I um, sort of got my bathroom in my house, it wasn't funded by my parents, it wasn't a thing that we invested in, it was actually, um, I was able to get some funding through our local council. You are able to get this uh, yourselves if you claim uh, personal independence payment or DVLA, whichever one you're on, it all depends on your brackets. But what I will do is I'll drop a link on some more information down in the description so if you do want to have a bit of a nose but again this was all sorted out by the council things to watch out for though with the council is I, I'm extremely grateful for them but they do tend to try uh, the builders they employ where it go job goes out to tender it will go to the cheapest one which makes perfect sense it's government, uh, it's government money but because of this you can find that you might have problems with um, small snagging jobs and you might run into problems further down the line. So if you have got a friend or anyone that is um, within the trade, I'd suggest getting them uh, sort of involved in the build just to keep an eye on things and make sure it ticks over, which I actually did with my dad. Um, where else was I going to say? Uh, so, fun little story. Uh, the bathroom originally, when we had planning, was due to go into our main bathroom, and I was about to take it over. Um, but then the designer actually came into my bedroom <laughs> looked at the bedroom and was like, we could fit it in here. And then he has an ensuite bathroom. So that was quite a sweet gig. I managed to get an ensuite bathroom. It makes life so much easier with mum, dad, Gina and everyone. So yeah, that was a fun little uh, brownie points for the designer. Thanks for doing that. Um, yeah, if you're watching this, please subscribe. Can <laughs> 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 you imagine if the designer was actually watching this? What, like, how many years later? Oh, he was old. He was <laughs> Bruce Forsyth. Right, so the first thing to watch out for is you will probably have a threshold. They try and make it as small and as low as possible. That's literally just because my bathroom is a wet room, so it's to make sure no wet waterness goes out here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, but other than that, so um, another little side note, I have actually got a Cosmat toilet fitting into our bathroom. It's more so to do with um, I have trouble with supination of my wrist, meaning I need support with uh, cleanliness. I'm not going to go into too much detail because you do not need that, <laughs> but it just uh, it, it, it supports you with your cleanliness and makes your life a lot easier. So that's the thing that um, the council also su um, supplied for us. They tend to do the maintenance for the first three sort of years, and after that point, you become responsible for it. But I haven't, we haven't really had to carry out any maintenance on it, so I wouldn't panic too much if it is something you're going to look into and that will support you. So as you guys would know from my previous videos, I hate um, things that look like hospital bathrooms or things that look like, looks like a disabled, disabled bathroom, wrong word, but um, a accessible bathroom and sort of looks very hospitalised and clunky. So I was very particular with putting things in place that to the naked eye doesn't look like anything that would support a disabled person or a person with mobility issues but I actually do. So prime example of this is the position of the towel rails. So you'll notice the position of the towel rails is fairly close to the toilet and the sink. That's so that I'm able to transfer using the sink, towel rail and the toilet without having anything like um, sort of other than the grab rails that you can already see around the toilet. So one thing to watch out for that goes without saying is door whips, obviously the council will be aware that that is a key area that you need to keep an eye out for. But 
another thing to watch out for is possibly getting a um, sliding door. Now there's a couple of reasons that this is a benefit and that is if you are getting it like me fitted in to your bedroom or a tight space it then doesn't encroach on that space but also it, it's a lot easier for those with mobility to use then pushing and pulling the door because you're able to just drag it and also they are fairly light um, but yeah great uh, great thing to watch out for. So you notice with my sink it's I'll demonstrate it. fairly sturdy it's not going to come off that's because it's actually reinforced um, just to make sure that it's able to support my weight when I need it. The other thing to note is you'll notice that I don't have a lowered mirror or anything. That, that's mainly because when I originally had it fitted, I was using my frame a lot more to move around the bathrooms and stuff. But now, obviously having it in my bedroom, um, I actually use my chair a lot more, so that's just that I've had to adapt to, but I am capable of leaning against the sink and doing what I need to do, so it's not too bad, it doesn't um, doesn't affect me too much, but obviously be aware that if it's something that you want to look into, obviously you want uh, your bathroom to fit perfectly for you and how you get around and move around and carry out your day-to-day -day life when it comes to being in the bathroom. <laughs> so you'll probably notice that I don't have any um, sort of seats in my bathroom or grab rounds that's again because I'm a pain in the ass and hate things to look very sort of hospital bathroom so I've actually found a way that works perfectly for me so I'll bring my K walker into the bathroom spin round back up and then I've got water leaning against I've got here to support me I've got my frame around me so there's no way of really falling the flooring I haven't actually mentioned. So this is extra grip flooring. So I can't, uh, it's unlikely that I'm gonna slip. Um, so that's a great thing to watch out for. Also, nice thing to note, I've got really sensitive pressure points on my feet and I hate like grippy tiles because it normally presses on it, but this is perfect. It doesn't hurt your feet or anything like that. Obviously, I will pre-warn you, the floor is a little bit battered along with the whole of the bathroom because I did get this carried out five years ago, or over five years ago. So just bear with us. Um, so yeah, that's sort of how I shower. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get any more naked, so don't come in for that. Um, if you do, go to the video where I get changed. You'll probably see me a little bit more naked there, but it's not, it's not, it's not your ideal. But I'm not doing that on this channel. But yeah, I'll leave a little thing sort of around here to go to the other video on how I get changed. But yeah, enjoy. Anyway, so in regards to the actual shower itself, obviously you've got an adjustable head here. You can get, um, they did offer for me to have two shower heads. So you'll probably see them in a lot of gym changing rooms where you can change between the individual head and one that's a fixed unit up there. So that's an option you could explore. Um, the other thing as well is with the shower unit, it actually heats the water from the mains so it can be, take a while to heat up and the temperature can change a little bit and also the pressure can be quite low. So it's something to possibly be aware of when you're talking to designers, you might wanna look at maybe getting an alternative tank or another way of increasing the pressure and making sure the temperature stays suitable for you. But yeah, other than that, I will say, obviously I've said that I'm not a massive fan of having grab rails and things around, but obviously if you do need them, they will supply them and obviously you can try and be as creative as you can in terms of um, making it suit the style of your bathroom. But yeah, just keep an eye on it. But as I say, this is just more of a general video to show you what's sort of available and what a possible solution to sort of your showering needs and cleaning needs could be. Um, I have previously used a bath, but I find that this is so much easier. As you've probably seen from a lot of my travel vlogs, I really don't like baths because I just think they are a bit of a pain in the ass and they take too long and I don't really find them that relaxing. On the con contrary to what Gina thinks, I, nah, baths can stay over there. I'm good with my shower, it's quicker, it's easier. But yeah, so that's sort of how I shower. Obviously as I say, there are other ways, but just play around and see what works best for you. But I just want to point out that there is support out there available for those who need um, adaptions to the house. These adaptions can also be actioned in other areas. 
during the time when they did the bathroom, I had a lot of doors widened throughout my home. So there are other options there in terms of getting the support. So another thing to mention is having an extended, oh, bit wet, uh, an extended floof. So this just helps me particularly with cleaning sort of my back, my feet, and things like that, just because where I have got restricted movement in my arms. But you can get these online fairly cheap. I think I even picked this one up at the pound shop. So uh, they're not expensive. But another thing to recommend is having, obviously this is all dependent on what works best for you. I find that having the sort of my shampoo and stuff here more suited than being possibly over the corner because I thought obviously with the position of where I stand, having something sort of here where they'd normally be, it gets in the way and it's just a bit of a pain in the ass. So uh, yeah, but it's worth working out what works best for you. There are um, adaptions again you can get. I know particularly with drying, I originally got offered a body dryer, which I didn't even know existed. It was like this big Dyson thing that would dry your body. It's like those things you'd possibly see in like um, leisure centre chain trims, the big like drying rooms. It's a bit weird, but um, it turned out that it was just going to encroach too much space and I didn't necessarily need it, but adaptions like that are available if you need them. Right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a bit more of an idea of the support that's available. As I mentioned previously, I will leave a link on any information I can find in terms of um, helping you apply for the funding yourselves or seeing what's out there available through your local council. I will say, obviously, I can only speak for my local council. I know it's roughly within the region of £30,000 you have access to. So, obviously, that's available to support you throughout your home, not necessarily just in the bathroom. But, yeah, hopefully it's given you a bit more of an idea. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash a like, comment, tell your friends, and I'll see you in the next video.